obviously, if you have a leg missing, you're injured. But you also have so many other stories and conversations in the book of the invisible injury or the yeah. kind of conversation among the soldiers, officers, doctors. Is this man who has, say, diarrhea or some other ailment, is that person really sick? And right. how did they how did they determine whether a soldier, obviously now beyond the medical, is sick or whether they can still perform their duties? Yeah, that's that was one of the things that um, I found most interesting as I set out to, to do this, was that I really wanted to look beyond amputations. Um, I came into the field at a moment where um, lots of people were, were writing about specifically amputation, which is good mm -hmm. and, and was, was very necessary. And some really incredible work came out of that. Megan Kate Nelson wrote about this in Ruin Nation, Brian Craig mm -hmm. Miller and Empty Sleeves. Um, and I don't know, maybe it was contrarian of me or something, but I was like, what about everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody was an amputee. Right. And the, I mean, the, the short answer to your question is, they never really came up with a good system for this because it's very, very difficult. It's very difficult yeah. today, yeah. right? Um, Non-visible disabilities and, and ailments are still very difficult to prove. And so yeah. it causes all sorts of problems with say um, SSD or with Medicaid or with workers' mm -hmm. compensation where there's a lot of back and forth between doctors and other authorities, say attorneys, you know, mm. other people involved in these kinds of decisions and the disabled person themselves. Right. And that's what I was finding during the Civil War is that there was these kind of um, conflicts between soldiers themselves and all of the authority figures that they had to go through in order to prove that they were as sick or as disabled as they said they were. And often those authorities were not inclined to believe them right. for a variety of reasons, right? Because a lot of times they thought, well, you're malingering. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to fight. You're just a coward. You're not a good man, right? Masculinity played into yeah. this a lot. Um, and so, I mean, in terms of how they were considered disabled enough to say, be shunted into the invalid corps or to be discharged, that came down still to the surgeons, mm -hmm. even though by the end of the war, they had more kind of clear directions of like specifically what ailments got you into the invalid court or what got you kicked out of, you know, discharged completely. It's kind of funny to look at that list because it seems very arbitrary. Like I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure that if you had lost your testicles, you could still go to the invalid core, but if you had lost more than half of your penis, you had to be discharged. Like it's very bizarrely specific, right? right? Um, and Especially when you consider anatom anatomical knowledge at the time too. <laughs> sure, right, yeah, and, and conflicts over what, I mean, the more visible a disability is, the more yeah. easy it is for people to agree that it's disabling. Right. But when you come up to someone and you say, well, I have rheumatism, rheumatism was a big problem because oh, yeah. it was very nebulous. Mm -hmm. it ch the, the symptoms changed from person to person. They changed over time yeah. over weather conditions, things like yeah. that. And so it yeah, was much all easier. All the outdoors all the time in all kinds of right. weather. Right. And so it was, it was very difficult for people to prove yeah. that that was a real thing. Right. So it's, <laughs> I hate to keep answering your questions by saying, well, it's complicated, <laughs> but especially for that one, that was really was complicated, right? Yeah. There was never a clear cut, um, way of delineating disabled versus non-disabled. They tried very hard. I mean, as you see later on in the pension system, they come up with all sorts of ways of trying to say, you know, if, if, if you've been disabled in this way, you're one fifteenth disabled versus five fifteenths disabled, but bodies don't actually work that way. And so it was, it didn't act, as much as they tried to make that work, it didn't always fit. 